Hey, Horror Fam. Today, Roger's going to help me reach the youth with our message of positivity. Right, Roger? That's right, Daddy-O. Why is it so hard to hold on to good feelings, but bad feelings are made out of some super duper psychic glue? Man, you could have a crazy high kill streak in Call of Duty, and you're feeling all good, and then someone says your mom black and and her cur Oh my god, Roger, people say that horrible stuff in Call of Duty? The cool people do, the not cool people do. Well, Dr. Bradley Nelson teaches in his book that these bad feelings can get lodged inside our bodies continue putting out their bad vibrations. Some nerd wrote a book about how how after someone informs you about your mother's infidelity you stay angry a long time. Well I've got some great news for you. Spirit Sync Wearables is doing the same thing but for positive feelings. Good news losers. Put on this chain and you'll feel less angry when me and my crew send you back to the lobby. Roger, tell me the truth. You're just saying made up words, right? It was on a dreary night in November that I finished. I prepared the tool to put a spark of life into the thing that lay before me. It was already one in the morning. I could hear the rain pattering outside. My candle was nearly burnt out, then I saw the dull, dead eye of the creature open. It breathed hard, its limbs shook. How can I describe the monster? I had made sure that his limbs were all the same size. I had chosen a beautiful face for him. Beautiful? Great God. His shriveled yellow skin hardly covered the muscles and arteries. His eyes, his eye sockets, all of it looked like death, not to mention the scars and stitching that covered it all. I had worked hard for nearly two years to bring a creature to life. I had denied myself rest and health, but now that I was finished, the beauty of my dream vanished. Horror and disgust filled my heart. I could not look at the face. As quickly as I could, I rushed out of the room. I ran to my bedroom where I walked back and forth trying to calm my mind. I was exhausted. I threw myself onto my bed, trying to forget what I had done. I did fall asleep, but I had terrible nightmares about death. I awoke in horror. A cold sweat covered my forehead. My teeth chattered, and every limb shook. Then, by the dim light of the moon, I saw the monster force its way into the room. His eyes stared at me. His jaws opened and he muttered some strange sounds. A grin wrinkled his cheeks. One hand was stretched out as if to stop me, but I escaped and rushed downstairs. I spent the rest of the night in the courtyard of the house, walking around in the greatest panic. In the morning, I left the courtyard and went into the streets. I did not dare return to the apartment. I was drenched by the rain which poured from the black sky, but I did not stop. Finally I reached the inn where the carriages usually stopped. I saw the stagecoach from Switzerland coming towards me. It stopped just where I was standing. As the door opened I saw Henry Clerval jump out. Victor! he exclaimed. I am so glad to see you. How lucky that you are here. When I saw him, I thought of father and Elizabeth and my home. In a moment, I forgot my horror. For the first time in a many months, I felt a peaceful joy. Henry told me that his father had finally agreed to let him come to the university. I am delighted to see you, I said, but tell me how my father, brothers, and Elizabeth are. Very well, although it makes them nervous that you never write or visit. But Victor, he continued, looking at my face. How very ill you look. So thin and pale, you look as if you have not slept for several nights. You are right. I have been so busy that I have not allowed myself enough rest. But I hope, oh how I sincerely hope, that I am now free. I couldn't bear to think about the night before. I could never tell Henry what had happened. Before long, 
we had walked to the college and my own apartment door. What if the creature was still in there? I did not want to see the monster, but I feared even more that Henry might see him. I asked my friend to wait for a few minutes, then I ran up to my rooms. A cold shivering came over me. I threw the door open quickly. Nothing appeared. I stepped in fearfully. No creature. I checked my bedroom. No hideous guest. I could hardly believe my good luck. The monster had fled. I clapped my hands for joy and ran down to get Henry. We went up to my place and had breakfast. I was so happy that I jumped over the chairs, clapped my hands, and laughed. My strange behavior frightened and confused Henry, but he couldn't understand. Suddenly I fell down unconscious. This was the beginning of a fever which tortured me for several months. Henry was my only nurse. I learned that during the whole time he did not tell my family how serious my illness was. While I was sick, I imagined that the monster was in the room with me. I remember, as if in a daze, that I talked about him constantly. I am sure my words surprised Henry. I recovered very slowly. When I began to be in my own mind again, I realized that it was already spring. My gloom disappeared, and I felt joy. My good friend Clerval, I said, how kind, how very good you are to me. You must have missed school this whole winter, taking care of me. How can I repay you? Repay me by getting well, Clerval said. Since you're feeling better, may I speak to you about one subject? I trembled. One subject? What could it be? I trembled more. Calm down, said Clerval. I just thought your father and Elizabeth would be glad to get a letter from you in your own handwriting. Is that all, Henry? Of course I will write. Ah, then you would like to read this letter. It's been here for a few days. It's from Elizabeth. Clerval put the letter into my hands. Hey guys, what a great chapter! Don't forget, you can support Super Horror Show by going to Patreon, or checking out our wearables, or fun coloring book on eBay. Likes and comments are always appreciated too, but most importantly, remember to take good care of yourself. I hope you will enjoy Chapter 4. If you ask me, it was a real shock to the system! <laughs> Ha <laughs> <laughs>